Today on Outside the Box Reviews, I want to talk about the new Bandai Tamashi Nation's Robot Spirits or Robot Damashi Pacific Rim Uprising figures. So I know, I forget if it was Toy Fair or a Comic Con or something, but a while back, Bluefin had it set up at a con and somebody asked them about doing Pacific Rim and they basically made some kind of big internet breaking comment about, well, we would do it so much better than NECA. Which is weird, because Bluefin's just a distributor, and not the ones that make the figures, so it's kind of an odd thing to do. Basically, they were just saying Bandai would make the figures better. But after all that time, finally, with the sequel, that's what we get here, is a brand new line of figures. But interestingly enough, Diamond Select ended up putting out basically the exact same figure selection of their own line. So, whatever happened here, it wasn't just Bandai Tamashi Nations that got the rights to make these figures, NEGA just lost one way or another, or chose not to pick it back up, which kind of seems odd seeing as how much they milked the first line dry. I think they would have been on for a second, but, you know, Randy likes to pick and choose his licenses based on how he feels about things, and, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily fault the man for being a little worried about what Pacific Rim 2 would be without Del Toro. And full disclosure, I really didn't like Pacific Rim 2 all that much without Del Toro. I mean, it was fine in, like, you know, I need a kaiju giant monster robot fight fix. But, you know, I have a whole bookshelf full of movies that are basically that. So, it was a fine way to spend a few hours in a theater, I guess. Actually, it wasn't even that because the seats I had were, like, really fucking uncomfortable. But... Whatever. Before I get too off topic here, I've picked up all of Wave 1 and then most of Wave 2. Wave 1 I was actually lucky enough to find as one of those last things before Toys R Us went to clearance nuclear apocalypse mode. It was the Gypsy Avenger, Phoenix Bracer, and Titan Redeemer figures. Basically the center over to the left. It also included Scrapper, who I forgot to even set up in this shot. He's like toppled over underneath Titan Redeemer over there. And I'm not going to knock all these figures over just to pick him up, because he's kind of crabby anyway. And then on the left, I picked up Saber Athena and Guardian Bravo, I think, from the New Wave. You can tell that I'm not super psyched about these designs or these characters, mostly by the fact that I can't remember what the hell they were called. And with the first movie, I knew, like, all of those obscure Jaegers that showed up for two seconds in the intro... Within a couple weeks of the movie being out, I had, like, their names down. I knew exactly what they looked like. Here, I don't even care about the ones that are really in the movie. But when it came to which figures to pick up between the Japanese imports and the American domestic releases, I felt like it was a really easy choice to make. Diamond Select can be very hit or miss. Bandai Tamashi Nations, I am usually a huge fan of. And I was even more excited because, thanks to one of my friends, I've kind of gone down the rabbit hole on Robot Spirits figures, particularly their Gundam figures. And I've really, really enjoyed collecting those and displaying those. They're really well-made figures, so I'll have to talk about them in depth at some point. But I figured these would be a lot of the same. And to a degree they are, they are priced below what a standard Gundam would be. This Gypsy Avenger here, I think, was only 20 bucks. The others, I think, were about 30 each. Setting aside the others, you just kind of look at Gypsy Avenger as the prototypical piece. The cheapest, but yet somehow the best of the bunch of them. I mean, they're nicely detailed in terms of sculpt. It has some great panels throughout them. It has a lot of the right sculpting for the characters. I like that they actually include some, like, translucent bits on this one. None of the other ones have translucent bits outside of the weapons, though. Gypsy Avenger also had, like, alternate arms, so you could have the gravity gun, which I have problems with, but we won't get into that. Not on the figure, just on the character. And then we got the chain sword on here, and that kind of good stuff. Extra hands for everybody. The articulation is bananas. I mean, you have the kind of drop-down legs that Tamashi Nations is famous for, so you could swivel them out to get a better range. Just tons of ball joints and swivel joints, double-hinged everything, and... You can basically move these figures into any position you would ever want to have them in. They are just ridiculously well-articulated figures. <laughs> the only downside being the heads. On some of them, it feels like they need a second joint at the base of the neck that they don't have to get some more like dynamic-looking up poses. But for the most part, they are really, really articulated, very easy to pose, and you can kind of balance them out pretty easily once you put them back down on the shelf. 
But my big gripe about these characters, and the one thing that I think NECA did a at least decent job of that Bandai hasn't even touched, is paint applications. The paint basically makes these Jaegers look like they are shiny and new off the assembly line, and granted, the Jaegers in this movie are significantly newer and shinier than they were in the previous film, where they were battle-hardened and just run-down machines that had seen hours and hours of combat, but... There is no weathering on any of these figures. Hell, I'll put Gypsy Avenger down and pull up Guardian Bravo here. And especially because he is has a lot of white sections on him and is bright red. And hell, we can even pull in Saber Athena as I knock things over. And same problem here. There's no panel lining on these. There's no scuff marks where paint has been torn away, like little bits of silver around the edges where wear and tear has happened. There's no dirt. There's no kaiju blood. There's nothing. It's just this... Uh, this one's actually probably the worst of the bunch. It's this orangey plastic with little bits of gray popping out. And it's visually boring as hell. There are some great sculpting on these figures, but damn if you can't see it. And, you know, I was surprised that Tamashi Nations didn't do a better job. But then I thought about it a little further, and especially about the Robot Tamashi line. And I am making a mess of my table here, and I am not going to apologize for it. But then I think, what is the main line that comes out of Robot Spirits? It's Gundam. And those are exactly the same. The difference being that the Gundam is going off of an animated source material... So, adding panel lines makes it look cool and makes it look more realistic and industrial and the whole Gunpla model kit universe people obsess over getting perfect panel lining and getting in those cool little worn details, which is part of the reason why I've kind of gotten into building some of those lately because it's just a lot of fun to make things look like crap after you make them look nice. But yeah, you look at this mobile suit here on the right and you can see there's panel lining detail all throughout it, but no paint to accent it. And I think it works better coming from an animated source. I think it also comes across better being that because it was an animated base, Gundams and mobile suits are designed to have a lot of different colors, contrasting bits to make it more visually unique without having to spend hours with each panel cranking out little details. When you have a CGI creation like the Jaegers, they always have that detail in them. You render it, I assume. I don't know. I haven't ever made 3D models for a movie like that, but I would assume the detail is constantly there on the model, and then you just tell the model what to do. So it just really hurts these figures that they are so bright and shiny and clean. Not the Gundams, not the mobile suits, but the Pacific Rim stuff, definitely. I would also like to call out the Bracer Phoenix. I believe it should have these tracks here in the front. How it can move the guns from the front and back of its chest. And there is no track, there's just like this open space. So I think that's a missing detail on that one. But that's just me being nitpicky about one specific figure. And then while we're crapping over a figure for its paint job, let's look at Scrapper here. That is all one color instead of the multicolored version we see in the film. This really just feels like something that came out of Vending Machine. It doesn't look like an actual thought out figure or accessory or anything like that. No articulation, just this gummy little rubber bit. And just to wrap things up here, just to do a quick comparison, there is the Gypsy Avenger there in the center. I feel like it's the most standard out of all of these, so might as well use it as my comparison point. And on the right there, I couldn't find a Gypsy Danger hanging around easily, so I have a, I think it's Coyote Tango from NECA. And you can see, A, it's a lot taller, and then B, it is a lot dirtier and a lot grosser looking. Now, the articulation is nowhere near what Bandai has done. And the posability definitely is lacking, but it's definitely a much more detailed machine for sure. And then just to give you an idea of a kaiju, there is, I think this one was just called Axe Head there on the left. And it was like the repaint of Trespasser, or maybe I have them backwards, but that's kind of the average kaiju we got out of that same knife head mold that was the second coming of knife head, not that first tiny one. So they actually do scale decently with a kaiju. They do kind of sit a little shorter than the NECA one. So that's not too bad if you already are all in on that first line. You have an okay comparison point. I'm not interested in picking up the kaiju from this line, to be quite honest. I wasn't really impressed with the kaiju in this movie, so I don't feel the need to buy any of them. So yeah, even after putting these on display and kind of 
airing my thoughts about them. I thought I might have kind of come to a conclusion while doing a pseudo review of these guys, but I still don't know if I like them or not. I obviously liked them enough to go and buy the two from the second series, and I do intend to pick up Obsidian Fury. He just hasn't been in stock anytime I've gone looking for him. But these overall are just leaving me a little cold, and I think it's a lot to do with the movie and the character designs, and beyond that, I guess it's the paint. And I guess I could repaint them. I guess it wouldn't be hard to put a wash over these figures and make them look a little more worn in and just paint them up like I would anything else. But it is a little disappointing for an import figure, which I usually associate with being a higher quality and more detailed piece, to kind of just be this coloring book looking. So that's how I feel about these. Let me know in the comments below. Did you like Pacific Rim 2? Did you bother seeing Pacific Rim 2? Do you like the character designs? Are they just kind of lame Transformers ripoffs? And if you picked up these figures, did you like them? Did you pick up the Diamond Select ones? I haven't even looked at those, to be quite honest. I don't think I'd go buy them now, even if I heard they were 20 times better, but I haven't even paid any attention to them just because I assumed these would have been the winners without a doubt. And maybe I was wrong.